I'd like to do a Fourier series problem, and in particular, I'd like to look at one for a triangle waveform. And so a triangle waveform like I would see up here for this x1, and where I certainly see its score increasing up to 1 at, at, at time equals 0 milliseconds, 1 millisecond back down to minus 1, and so forth. Now, an interesting aspect is if you look at this function, you realize that the derivative of it is actually this square wave, right? Where it goes from 2 to this derivative sort of with regard to uh, t0, right? So I'm dealing with milliseconds. goes from 2 to minus 2 as I'm working back and forth on this. And what's interesting about this is you say, well, wait a minute, I maybe I know something about a previous Fourier series. Because certainly I could start off with saying here, here's x sub t, and I could go through and calculate it, work through the orthogonal functions, and solve for the a, a sub k's as a result. Okay, that works. But another thing I know is if I take a function and I integrate it, let's say I start with an x sub t and I integrate it to x1, an interesting property is I get the a sub k and I get to divide it by 2 pi kf um, and, you know, 2 kf and with the j, you know, there's also a j term in there as well, depending on how that shifts it. And we're going to see that shift from, say, sort of a sine to a cosine. And this is really interesting. Well, of course, integration of sine gives you cosine, right? And, and so this really becomes, or integrate, it's minus, it's plus, and it works. What's really interesting here is that now you can take the series and kind of work through it and go, huh, if, so if I can take integration, I could just kind of work backwards. So I could say, well, if I know that a Fourier series of x2, and in fact, I would know to be you know 8 over pi k, there's a minus sign because this is uh, flipped from a different form. Amplitude is actually going from 2 to minus 2 versus maybe a form I might be used, for, used to thinking of 4 over 4 pi k. But I could get this. And if I start with this, I think, well, wait a minute. I can start there. I can then use the same approach, knowing, that, knowing what t0 is here, which is then 2 milliseconds. And actually, I can find x1 and just find it directly from that formulation. And I'm like, that's great. Because a lot less intervals to do and a lot less other math. And in fact, once you get a few basic structures, it works. You might argue that I could have just solved all these integrals and solved them by integration of parts. And what do you do when you do integration of parts? You're basically effectively doing one of these kinds of steps. So it's all very consistent. So just to kind of show you how this looks then in terms of the Fourier series, this would have been what I would have calculated out. I get three terms that are sort of non-zero because this is only true for the odd terms. Right, for the even terms, they're zero. And so for the odd terms, I, which would then be at one, three, and five, I get three coefficients, eight over pi squared, eight over nine pi squared, and eight over 25 pi squared. The next one is eight over 49 pi squared. So it's about a 2% error ignoring that one at the, at the seventh, in the seventh position. And here's what actually the, the triangle wave looks like and the three terms sinusoidal approximation looks like on that triangle wave. It's a pretty good, it's pretty good. Now what you will know is that the edges, it's kind of missing. This is a classic problem uh, in terms of the, the sharp step that would actually happen even here, that I would have issues around the steps. Um, and that's the tough part in terms of the approximation. Uh, so no surprise there, but otherwise, pretty nice even with three terms in this particular series and so it's pretty incredible uh, how to do this and also useful that you can use some of these tricks to get a pretty nice for you series